You have heard about maca root, right? It's one of the popular herbs for men's health, bring the confidence back in men. So I wanted to verify if it's true and look for evidence of its efficacy for men's health. Are you ready? Let's go. Hello, Dr. Sean here. If you've been on the lookout for men's health supplement, let's not dwell on it. Instead, let's explore what it can actually help. So I began with maca root. Maca root akin to turnip is cruciferous vegetable like broccoli and cabbage. This particular maca hails from Peru and has been cultivated for over 2000 years. There is a historical record of Peruvian consuming maca since BC 1200, so about 3000 years ago. Growing at high altitude like 3 to 4000 meters above the sea level, it endures minimal rain, extreme cold, constant snowfall, and intense sunlight, painting a picture of truly harsh environment. In response, maca is renowned for its ability to retain nutrients, generate essential nutrients, and guard against illness or pathogen with resistant components like secondary metabolites. In the past, Peruvian didn't eat maca raw. Instead, they would divide into about 20 grams, dry it, and then consume it. There was a saying that eating raw maca has some poisonous components, but that wasn't verified. Upon closer examination of maca itself, no substance were found that could function as poisonous factors. Anyways, there is a historical record that when Spain invaded the Inca Empire, they fed maca to their horses to promote production of more horses. Additionally, many historical records indicate the practice of giving maca to younger people, both male and female, to promote the production of offspring. So, from animal to people, maca has indeed been used for reproductive purpose for a long time. Maca from Peru has the most available studies now, with 60 to 70% of maca market being Peru maca. Let's take a look at the nutritional composition of maca. When you examine maca, 80% is water. According to USDA, 100 gram of maca powder contains 75 gram of carbohydrates. To save your time, I'm not gonna read out all the numbers, but you can pause and take a look. The amount of copper and zinc are minimal, so much so that this report doesn't even show them. Upon checking other reports, some suggest it contains various minerals and vitamins, though these quantities remain small. Therefore, apart from USDA reports, other sources indicate that maca includes the folic acid, the vitamin B group, zinc, and copper. Instead of these basic nutrients, let's delve into pharmacological ingredients, which fall under secondary metabolites. There are three groups. The first is alkaloid group. The second one is glucosinolate group. And the third one is plant sterol. Maca possesses compounds in the first group known as macalidin and macamides. Since these compounds are exclusive to maca, researchers suspect that they may be the element contributing to improvement of men's health. In the second group, there is a component called aromatic glucosinolate. This compound contains nitrogen and sulfur, providing a unique taste characteristic of cruciferous vegetable. It also serves as a protection against bugs and parasites, making it representative antioxidant and anti-inflammatory precursor among cruciferous vegetables. The content of this aromatic glucosinolate component is approximately 10 times higher than the found in other cruciferous vegetables. And lastly, in this plant sterol group, there are beta sterol campasterol, and stigmasterols. So, with this analysis of maca, we are still not sure why this maca helps with libido, men's health, and menopause symptoms. We can assume these components are the reason, but there are many human trial studies done on this matter, and most of them are chemical studies or animal studies. I only look for verified studies that have done double-blind, randomized control test, but was only able to find about 10 studies within 20 years of frame. So I'll share with you what I found based on these studies. First of all, 
between 2015 to 2023, I found three studies. The first one is, does maca improve the quality of sperm? They checked 69 males diagnosed with infertility, gave 2 grams of maca for 12 weeks to see if there are any changes in motility, morphology, and volume of sperm. The results showed that there were no changes in motility and morphology, but the volume was increased. The second one is if maca improves high blood pressure and depression in postmenopausal women. The study was done in China with 29 women. They gave 3.3 gram of maca for 12 weeks. And the result shows that there were no changes in FSH or LH hormones, but they dropped the blood pressure by 7 to 8 points. And their depression and anxiety improved by about 30%. The third one was done with 50 males with infertility diagnosis. They gave 16 weeks of maca to one group, and there was a 40% improvement in sperm quality in that group. But the placebo group showed 76% improvement. So the result, they're not sure about the effectiveness of maca. And this is how they concluded. So we need to dig in more, right? I checked further back and found four more studies from 2000 to 2015. The first one is if maca can affect libido and male hormone levels. This study included age 21 to 56 and gave 1.5 to 3 gram of maca. After that, libido increased, but there were no changes in hormonal levels. Just like the previous one, there were no changes in hormone levels in male and females but symptoms improved. The second study was whether maca helps with women's low libido due to depression. In this study, 10 females who are taking antidepressant medicine took 3 grams of maca for 12 weeks, and another 10 females took 1.5 grams of maca for 12 weeks. The results show that female libido increased with the group with 3 grams of maca, but not so much with the 1.5 gram group. So what we can assume is, in order to get some benefit, the dosage should be around 3 gram. The third one is whether maca root was helpful with postmenopausal women for female libido. In this study, they gave 3.5 gram of maca for 12 weeks to 14 postmenopausal women. And the result shows, again, there were no changes in hormonal levels, but the anxiety and depression were improved. Therefore, libido was also improved. The last one was whether maca was helpful with mild erectile dysfunction and sexual performance. In this study, they gave 2.4 gram of maca extract for 12 weeks, and both maca group and placebo group showed improvement. But maca group showed more improvement in their performance. Now, what we can conclude from this data is that maca somehow helps with sexual function in both male and female, but it doesn't affect hormone changes. And it does help with mental health. I wish there were more studies on maca, but there aren't many compared to other supplements. Please check this video about why it's so hard to do studies on supplements. Anyways, let's come back to maca. When I look up all the studies, it seemed like it's safe to take 8 to 20 gram of maca powder. And when it's extracted, then it's a 2 gram to 4 gram is a safe. And as far as the side effect goes, the most common one is digestive issue, allergy reaction, such as a sweating and headache. And it's not common, but I found there was a case where maca elevate AST, ALT, the liver enzyme level. Also, it could lower blood pressure. So if you have low blood pressure, you need to be cautious. And maca has a relatively high potassium content, so if you have a kidney issue, please talk to your doctor before you consider taking maca. Now, which maca should I take? I want you to check three things when you look for maca. First of all, there are three colors of macas, yellow, red, and black. When you plant the seed, 70% become yellow, 20% become red, and 10% become black. So technically, there is no difference between the color and its component in maca. But there are also claims that yellow is for more general health, 
red is more for female but helps with the prostate and bone density and black is for male like libido and sperm quality. I'm not so sure about this claim but the very first study about the sperm quality they used the black maca. But still, I believe there is not enough evidence to claim a certain color of maca is better than the other. So I want to conclude that any maca should be fine. If the product is divided into colors, I think that's more for marketing purposes. The second tip is whether you go with the regular powder or extract. I think the extract maca will be better choice. Remember I said 80% of maca is water and 75% is starch. Once you remove water and starch, then it becomes extract. Because they remove the starch, it will be easier on your stomach. The last thing for you to consider is where they source their maca. I prefer you choose maca from Peru just because they have the most studies. I picked the ones that I found from Amazon as an example. The first one is this one. It's a 6 to 1 concentrated formula and it comes with capsule form, making it easy to take. Each capsule has a 750 mg, so you can take 2 capsules per day for general health and 3 capsules per day for a more targeted approach. The second one is this one. I don't know the ratio of a concentration, but I tried it myself with my own money. The reason I like this one is that 1 teaspoon, you can get 5 gram, which covers all you need. The taste was not bad, but you can always add it to water or smoothie. If you are getting it for general health, half a teaspoon will do. When I was looking into maca, I couldn't stop thinking about ginseng. In Korea and China, ginseng has been used for stamina. It's been utilized for thousands of years. And as ginseng is popular now, more and more studies are emerging to support its effectiveness. I believe maca serves a similar role for Latin American people and in order to completely verify its effectiveness, we might need a little more time. Thanks for watching the video. I'll be back next week with three things you could do at home to tackle ED. Remember, health is wealth. Invest in yourself. This is Dr. Sean, making health easy for you. Stay healthy, stay happy. Bye!